Thank you, Chantel. Um, I'm Grace Heeneman, and I'm head of the piano department. And this evening's presenter, Jennifer, is one of the wonderful members of our department. And I just want to give you a little bit of background about Jennifer. She is a very um, multi-talented and very busy musician. She's a pianist, arranger, chamber musician, accordionist, with a passion for playing music from around the world. And her specialties are Latin American repertoire and newly composed music. She is a founding member of the Bernal Hill Players, which is a chamber music group. And she also plays Latin folk uh, with the Latin folk duo Chile e Limon, e Limon, sorry, and with her piano duo partner Lauren Coney. Jennifer earned music degrees from the University of London and also from San Francisco State University. And she's taught at Community Music Center since 2000. At the center, she regularly performs in the Shenson Faculty Concert Series and also the Faculty Keyboard Marathon, which happens annually. Over the years, she's taken on many other projects, including producing a faculty chamber music series coordinating the student chamber music program, teaching at the children's summer music camp, and serving as head of the piano department. So she has a, a wonderful story to tell about all of the interests she has. I'm eager to hear it, I know you are. So Jennifer, it's all yours, take it away. <laughs> thanks so much, Grace. And thanks, thanks for inviting me to, to come and share my stories with you. Uh, I feel a bit shy about being so auto, autobiographical today. So uh, I want to start by clarifying what my goals are in using this time to share, share stories from my musical life with you. So uh, my first goal, I'm just going to share a screen here, is to, uh, to illustrate the supportive role that CMC has played in my development as a musician over the past 20 years. And longer, if you count, when I was a teenager, I joined the CMC choir in 1977. So it's really been a very long time that CMC has been in my life one way or the other. And uh, I, I hope that my stories inspire fellow faculty to feel good about working at CMC and inspire uh, people studying at CMC to feel good about being students at CMC and inspire the general public to feel good about supporting CMC. So that's uh, um, another goal that I have in uh, sharing my stories with you here today is to talk about uh, how, you can, how can you can become a musician and to show people that uh, an example of the diverse world of career possibilities out there. Um, when I was starting out, all I could see were the world-renowned soloists on center stage, and no one explained to me the many other ways there are to make your living and be in the world as a musician. So on the, on the left side of the page, there you have the, you know, the, the straight arrow of the child protege who becomes a world-famous soloist. But on the right, you have everyone else, including me, and some of the twists and turns uh, that you can make. Uh, in the journey towards becoming a musician in the community. So uh, another goal I have today is to inspire uh, people to think about their role in the larger community and to find creative ways to engage with and contribute to the community at large. So I drew a little picture here of different ways that I've um, interacted with the larger community as a musician and there's a little CMC spider there in the corner helping weave all those webs of interconnection uh, with the community. So I've appreciated its help in doing that. Uh, my fourth uh, goal today is to inspire curiosity and respect for the amazing cultural diversity of musical expression throughout the world and to raise questions about issues such as cultural identity, cultural appropriation, uh, and cultural exclusivity versus inclusivity. So uh, these are some of the issues I'm hoping to uh, touch on today. And as, as I thought about my life in music, uh, there has recurred three themes I've found that have, have recurred in my life 
in music. And those are cultural explorations, creative expression, and community engagement. So I'm going to sort of frame my seminar today uh, around those three themes. So the first theme I'm going to start with is cultural exploration. So I'm going to dive back into my childhood for that and tell you something about uh, my roots, my cultural roots musically. And um, so, well, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest and my father was a wheat farmer and he loved to sing cowboy songs and uh, spirituals, African-American spirituals and uh, songs from the latest musicals. And my mother was from the Midwest and she loves bluegrass and she loves uh, the 1960s uh, folk revival, Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, people like that. And uh, she played a lot of Beatles around the house when I was growing up. And my older brother, he, uh, he was playing Santana and Jimi Hendrix. Those were his two favorite bands. So nobody in my house growing up really listened to classical music, including myself. Although I loved playing it on the piano I, since the age of five. So there was kind of a, a bit of a disconnect between what I was listening to and what I was playing. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was taking, taking my piano playing very seriously, and I went to a, a classical music academy, which I actually felt a bit squashed by the competition there. And uh, meanwhile, my brother went to study North Indian classical music at the Ali Akbar College of Music in Marin County. And I joined him there when I was 15, and I studied on and off there for two years. And it was a, a wonderful transformational experience for me. Uh, it really transformed my, my understanding of music, and, and it opened my ears to the diversity of uh, cultural musical expression in the world. So um, I'm gonna share another screen with you. And show you a picture of my brother on stage with uh, Zakir Hussain, who later became a very famous tabla player. At that time, he'd recently arrived from India, very talented and charismatic young teacher. And my brother was uh, his star pupil. And he was here he is performing with my brother on stage. So uh, I got a lot of wonderful musical training. And it was inspiring, not just for the virtuosity and beauty of the music, but the, uh, I, the way the music was taught was very inspiring to me. It was this wonderful, vibrant oral tradition that the music was taught, and Zakir would recite a composition verbally and then play it. And so I'm going to play you a recording so that you can hear some of that going on. Uh, this is uh, Zakir reciting a piece and then uh, my brother and him play. <laughs> Okay, well, I could listen to that for a while, but I guess we better continue for today. Could you hear that? Could you hear the music? Yeah? Okay, good. All right. So uh, I, I went back to classical music after this experience with Indian music. Uh, but these questions about cultural identity started really coming to the forefront for me as I came into young adulthood. And ever since then, I've, I've been trying to figure out how and where I can fit in musically and culturally in this very wide world. 
And as far as I could tell, classical music was all written by dead white European men. And the Indian music was very tied up with their culture and clothes and everything. And I was attracted to music that I could play with other people and make up. But I felt intimidated as a woman in many of the musical genres that have interested me, such as salsa and jazz. And uh, in fact, I think part of the reason I've kept coming back to classical music in my career is that I see plenty of other classical musicians that look like me. <laughs> so I feel like I fit in. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to do another share with you and show you uh, a video of me playing uh, some Bach in the very first piano marathon that was run by uh, that Juliet, the great late Juliet McComas started at the Community Music Center, an annual tradition of uh, get, bringing the piano faculty together to play a concert together. And this was the first time that happened in 2004. So here I am playing a bit of Bach, prelude number 16 from the Well Tempered Clavier Book One. Uh, get out of that one and okay so uh, as I pondered these issues about the relationship between culture and music in my life I've gotten excited about a lot of different kinds of music uh, I've taken classes in music from Bali and Ghana and Brazil uh, Cuba and Mexico and most recently, I'm exploring classical music by black composers. And I'm currently studying a piece by a black woman by the name of Margaret Bonds from the early 20th century. And the piece is based on the famous African-American spiritual Wade in the Water. At first, I wondered whether it was appropriate for me as a white woman to play it. Uh, when I went on YouTube and, and saw other performances, they were all by black performers. But then I thought, well, isn't the point to get these composers out of the ghetto and for, for everyone to play them? So, uh, so here I am playing it. Anyway, I grew up singing African-American spirituals alongside other American folk songs. So I do feel it's part of my cultural heritage again as well. So um, I'll play a little bit for you. Can everyone see me? Yes, are we good? Okay, so here's here's a little bit of uh, it's called Troubled Waters by Margaret Bonds. Thank you. 
Well, there's a little snippet for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be playing the rest at the next uh, Faculty Piano Marathon, which will be on May 1st. So I hope you can make it. It's going to be live at Old First Church and also streamed simulcast. So I hope uh, you can make it to, the to that and you can hear the rest of that piece. <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, that leads me to the next thing I want to share. My next topic for the day uh, is I'm going to do a screen share here. Is uh, creative expression. And I, I have really felt supported by CMC in my uh, efforts to create, uh, express myself creatively. <laughs> which I have a big urge to express myself creatively in my life, and it's, that happens through music for me mainly. And CMC's been a great place for, for uh, helping me do that. There's these great grants that you can get at CMC and the Shenson Award, and it's helped me have various flowerings of creativity and many performances and recordings and uh, commissioning projects. And it's been really helped by the, you see it down here, I drew this fertile soil uh, that helps the plant grow, a beautiful concert hall, and fantastic fellow faculty, uh, discounts on classes. I've taken classes from various faculty, learned some wonderful new things, and uh, a, a great non-hierarchical, non-competitive atmosphere, which has been very important for me. So I really appreciate that. So I'm now I'm going to share with you some of the some of my creative projects. So uh, let's see here. I have a few photos to share with you. Here is a photo. These are just uh, the a wall in my music studio, which has all uh, postcards of uh, many different concerts I've done with the Bernal Hill Players, uh, which is my chamber music group, and uh, we've including commissions of works by Bay Area and Mexican composers. And we also focus on women composers with the Burnham Hill Players. And uh, here we are, here I am performing with the Burnham Hill Players. Kind of a blurry photo, that's of me and uh, my wonderful wife, Marta Rodriguez Salazar, on the flute. And the wonderful cellist from the San Francisco Symphony, Jill Grindel. And we're performing at the Old First Church. Uh, and then here's a photo of us rehearsing, having lots of fun rehearsing with our clarinetist, Leah de Tullio, who started out as a CMC student of mine, a chamber music student, and then we just ended up enjoying playing together so much that we formed this uh, chamber group. Uh, here I am performing with my piano duet partner, Lauren Coney, who I met through the Community Music Center. Uh, here we are performing in Santa Cruz, and uh, here we are performing at the San Francisco Conservatory. Uh, and then here I am performing with the rest of the piano faculty at one of the wonderful uh, piano marathons run by the Community Music Center. Uh, here's another, oh, this wall in my, <laughs> this wall is showing uh, lots of postcards from all different uh, piano marathon concerts over the years, starting with the first one in 2004. And uh, the last one I think was meant to be 2020, but because of COVID, it ended up being a year later, 2021. So, uh, and finally, I have a folk group with my wife, Marta. We do uh, Latin folk music with accordion and voice. So those are some of the things, and I was gonna show you a few videos uh, of some of this music too. So let me uh, share some of that with you, let's see. Here it is. Uh, let's see if we can find this. Excuse me, just taking me a minute here to find what I'm looking for. I see it. There it is. Okay. 
so here we are with the Burnley Hill Players playing a piece by Piazzolla, which uh, I arranged. And uh, you're going to hear me doing an improvised piano solo in the middle of this. So here we go. <laughs> Let me see if there's a few other things I wanted to share with you. Um, are people hearing things okay and seeing things okay? Great. Uh, this, for some reason, ah, there we go. Okay, so I wanted to share. Uh, this is another Bernal Hill Players uh, piece by Louise Ferenc. This is one of the women composers we've been promoting, a 19th century French woman. Um, Okay, and uh, then uh, there's a couple of other things that I wanted to share with you. Um, this is from another piano marathon. I'm playing a piece called El Puerto. This is some of my solo work, El Puerto by Isaac. Alvenes.
Okay. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to share, which is here I am playing with my piano duet partner. That's my final thing from this section I want to share with you. Hungarian dances. Brahms. snippets there. Um, now I'm going to switch gears. So that was that was me just sharing some of my creative projects with you that have happened over the years at CMC. And now I'm going to switch gears and I want to talk about the third topic uh, of these what I've seen as recurrent themes in my life of music and that is the topic of community engagement. So um, these are some of the ways that I've been involved with the community. Uh, and that it's always been really important to, to me. And my first big experience of community engagement was uh, when I was living in London as a young woman in the 1980s, and I got involved in playing accordion for community theater and anti-nuclear protest events. So there I am as a young woman playing accordion. And uh, we went, took to the streets and played music for, uh, we, my boyfriend and I started this band called the Fallout Marching Band, which played music for anti-nuclear protests. And uh, we got quite a lot of press. There I am with my friend Marcus, getting on the front cover of uh, <laughs> The Economist magazine in England. Uh, can so many young people be wrong about the bomb? <laughs> uh, at some point I switched to saxophone because I got was getting drowned out on my accordion. So there I am playing the saxophone. Uh, and the band grew to have around 30 members and uh, it toured uh, Europe and uh, England. And so it was a wonderful, uh, vibrant, creative group of people. We did a lot of our own songwriting and we had a lot of fun together. And uh, this was another uh, project that I got involved in. Uh, there was a really interesting uh, women's uh, peace camp. It was called the Green and Common Women's Peace Camp. It was a protest about 60 miles west of London surrounding an uh, uh, Air Force base that was bringing in cruise missiles. And I helped organize a music festival there. And uh, the Fallout Marching Band played. And we had uh, two stages, an amplified stage and an acoustic stage, and lots of performers. And uh, here was my uh, questionnaire for musicians talking about music as direct action. And uh, this was another festival later on that year that I helped organize. This was really became a quite famous event because it ended up being, the idea was to have women come and hold hands around the perimeter of this Air Force base. It was a nine mile perimeter and uh, they showed up well, 30,000 women showed up and held hands around this Air Force base singing songs. Music was a very important part of this whole movement. And, uh, and we, we, you know, we uh, passed out song sheets and everything. Music was a very important part. There we are, we made, we made uh, rainbow costumes and uh, played music as we marched around the perimeter of the base. And uh, this was shortly after that, there was an event where some women actually climbed over the fence and went into the base and held hands as they danced around the top of the missile silo. And I was there playing music for them. 
as they did that. So we got a lot of press. We got a lot of press for it. Uh, and the press always mentioned the music. It was a really important part of this, uh, this whole thing. It ended up, the women were there for years, and it ended up being successful. They took the cruise missiles away, so it was interesting. This is just a score of a song I wrote during that period. Uh, that songbook is still knocking around. People are still using that for, for protests. So, um, so that was back then. Those, that's the gnarly details from my youth that I mentioned, <laughs> as advertised. <laughs> uh, more recently, at, the, at, at CMC, um, I've really been enjoying it. it my work has given me great fulfillment in feeling able to contribute to the local community as a, as a teacher and as an accomplished and a performer. And here I am uh, with this wonderful project I've been involved in for the last 10 years, an older adult choir project. Uh, directed by Margaret, uh, Marta Rodriguez Salazar, and uh, here I am singing and playing accordion with the, the choir. That's been a really wonderful project in the community. We go around to different senior centers in the Mission District. And um, hang on. Uh, here I am accompanying students from the uh, Community Music Center's Latin Vocal Workshop at a local venue, the Red Poppy Art House and uh, accompanying another student from the Latin Vocal Workshop at the Bethany Center. And here I am accompanying a choir, uh, Marta's uh, Cordo de Camera class at the CMC. And I've also really loved the wor working with the uh, CMC Summer Camp for Kids. There I am performing with a couple of kids at the summer camp. And uh, just the bread and butter work for me, you know, the teaching piano, it's, it's a very exciting work for me. There I am with a, a batch of kids at, at a recital at C, in the CMC Concert Hall. Um, and here I am just teaching piano. It's one of my students, Adriel Hulse, who loved to improvise. Uh, here's a couple of my students who love playing two piano pieces together. And here's a student who loved uh, making up her, her songs and uh, singing and playing like a pop star. <laughs> uh, and I just included that photo. I still get out on the streets and protest now and again since, uh, since the recent political events. It seems like it's time to get back out on the street again. So those are uh, some of my more recent activities. And... Um, these are some of my upcoming future dates. Uh, I'm going to be in the piano marathon again on May 1st at the Old First Church. Uh, I have a two, another two piano concert planned with Lauren Coney on May 22nd at the San Francisco Conservatory. So COVID permitting, I hope it will permit us to do it. Uh, the Bernal Hill players are, are uh, rehearsing some music, which I hope we're going to get a chance to play uh, sometime in late June. And we're working on some world premieres, which we commissioned by uh, CMC uh, faculty, composers, Davide Verota and Sarah Stiles, uh, as well as we're also playing pieces by Lily Boulanger, uh, Takemitsu, Sally Davis, and Brahms. So I hope we're going to get a chance to do that this summer. And uh, just I just added the ongoing work I'm doing with the choirs for older adults, uh, which uh, are happening in community centers in the Mission District. So those are some of my future dates. And I just have one more thing to share with you. And then I will uh, open it up for, for questions and comments. So my final share with you today is of a wonderful project that uh, was happening for a number of years, I think about 10 years, called the Posarela. It was a Mexican Christmas show, and it involved lots of different parts of CMC. And so you're going to see us uh, playing uh, Mi Burrito Sabanero. Let me uh, share that with you. And here we go. Uh, let's 
see what happened. Where is it? Huh. <laughs> Hang on. I think I'm going to, it's, it's acting funny. I'm going to try again. Here I go. Share. There. There. Can you see it? I can see it, but I can't see where to play it. Oh, I see. It, it's being hidden. Ah, okay. Got it. Okay, here it is. videos and things were working for you. <laughs> Bravo! That's, that's, that's fantastic, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Woo! That's so great. You're welcome. I, I just kind of powered through that. I hope I hope uh, I hope you can see the videos and, and hear them and stuff. Excellent. Great. It came across very, very well. Oh and great. I I just want to say, you know, that um, this series is a, a joint project of the piano department and the cultural traditions department. Um, Traeger, who has been backing up the hosting on this, is the head of the cultural traditions department and I head the piano department currently. And so we teamed up to broaden this um, presentation. Last year it was cultural traditions and there was lots to share from that. Uh, this year we have two departments participating. Um, and we really felt that Jennifer was a perfect person to lead off the series because she embodies really both of the uh, directions we're coming from for this series. She does so many different things. And my, um, I guess I'm just, um, I mean, I've always felt this way about everything you do, Jennifer, but so many musicians are, you know, managing to be very good at one thing. And you have really, uh, followed such a diversity of interests and done so well with all of them. I think your basic musicianship skills just carry you into different formats and different genres where you're able to to uh, bring your your sensitivity, your technique, and and just perform very well in different ways. Um, Thank you. So <laughs> it's a little fan club here. That's all. <laughs> Uh, and I wanted to again invite everybody who has any responses or questions. You're welcome to put them in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand, we'll try to keep an eye on all of the pictures in the gallery. Um, and I see we have two pages here. We've got a lot of people listening tonight, which is really wonderful. Yeah, thank you, um, everybody, for coming. It's a yeah. thrill to see you all out there. <laughs> Three pages. Three pages, okay, even better. Um, but we'll try to keep an eye on all of those so that we don't miss your questions. Um, I know one person was asking about your time in London. I'm curious about what took you to London, if you can share a little bit more about um, what your, you know, uh, what took you there and how you... Uh, how I ended up there? Well, I just was doing that sort of thing, youthful thing of traveling to see the world. And I went around Europe and then I ended up in England and I was just kind of stumbling through life, uh, sort of growing up somehow. And I just started when I when I got to I traveled around Europe first. And then when I got to England, I just started meeting all these wonderful people and uh, finding uh, wonderful creative connections. I, I got involved in uh, the theater scene first in London and playing music for for, with different local theater companies. And I was playing with an old time music hall company. That was really fun. And then I got involved with some community theater. And I also stumbled across a experimental music scene and all these uh, free music people. And uh, I just was, uh, it, 
life was exploding with discoveries, creative uh, political discoveries. I was discovering a whole feminist uh, movement. And then I discovered this whole anti-nuclear movement. So I was kind of coming into adulthood in terms of kind of political consciousness and, and uh, creative identity. It was a wonderful time. How long were you there, Jennifer? Uh, I was there for 15 years. I really came of age in oh. London. I, I showed up in London in, in May 1979. It was the month uh, that I showed up the week that Margaret Thatcher got elected. <laughs> so um, London was still this kind of vibrant socialist culture when I arrived. There were all sorts of funds and all sorts of free classes and all sorts of um, uh, free education. I mean, there was all sorts of resources for young people. Uh, so it was a really wonderful time to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Oh, I'm going to turn to Traeger. He's got a question. Yeah, well, I, it's fascinating. It's always been great working with you. I think we've been working together for like 15 years, but I heard some stuff that I haven't heard before. And it, it's just, um, I thought it's it's so interesting to see that that what we have done where I've worked with you in the center is kind of what you've been doing your whole life. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, what you what you were doing in England and what you're doing before is what you're doing now. And I was wondering, how did you end up coming to CMC? And 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 would you agree with me that you're that that CMC was is part of you know providing you a space to do what you would be doing anyway? Absolutely. And how, and how did you get? How did you how did you discover CMC? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That CMC fits so much with my idea of how I want to uh, be in the world, you know, to serve the community and interact with the community and, and have a very open uh, openness to all different kinds of music and all different kinds of people. Um, I, I discovered CMC, I stumbled across CMC when I was a, a lonely teenager in San Francisco. And I can't remember, somebody told me there was a choir happening there. And uh, so I went, yeah, that was 1977. And so somehow I found my way there. I was living in uh, Chinatown at the time with my boyfriend. And, uh, and the choir was this wonderful 50 person choir, this vibrant community. And they were doing these major choral works. We did the Brahms Requiem and we toured the Bay Area. It was just this wonderful, exciting community. So that's, I discovered CMC then. And uh, then I was in Europe for 15 years. And when I came back, one of the first things I did was uh, sign my son up for the children's choir at CMC. And, uh, and then I ended up, uh, you know, becoming a faculty in 2000, so. That choir was um, the community chorus, I think it was called, um, the, with uh, Renee Grant Williams conducting. Yes. Is that yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a very talented young woman at the time. Um, and um, one of her projects, I mean, she took on big projects. One of them was to do a 24 hour Messiah. And uh, she recruited about eight other choirs and conductors and uh, accompanists and orchestra people and so on and put this on at the First Unitarian Church. Uh, it went live for 24 hours and oh, it wow. was just amazing. Wow. So, wow. Uh, that was that was probably the biggest of those projects. But yeah. so did you sing in that one? Were you in the choir at that time? I wasn't. The main one I remember is a Brahms Requiem. And I yeah, remember going to Sacramento, fabulous. I think, or something. But um, yeah. that sounds wonderful. She was really charismatic, wonderful. And I think Dorothy Barthouse from the faculty may have soloed with the Requiem. Does that sound right? I it might have been. I, I don't remember, but. But, anyway, uh, could well yeah. have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Do we have some more questions or comments, responses that you'd like to share? Looking for hands up. Lynn, you unmute yourself and. Hi. Can you hear me? You yeah, can. Okay, well, since no other hands went up, I put mine up. <laughs> uh, I want to say first, Jennifer, thank you very much. I really liked your arrangements of the two pieces. I think there were, were was your arrangements. Um, I just want to comment that the interesting thing, and I think that's what you were about tonight, is this intersection of your musical experience and your social experience. 
and a girl from a wheat farmer background, not only coming into classical music and then going all beyond that. So you do have a very fascinating story and the, the, the combinations there of those two sides, I think is, is really interesting, you know, how you come into different kinds of music and bring that music to community and bring community experiences into your choices of music. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, well, thank you very much for, for, for catching that. And um, that, is, that is what, uh, what keeps my mind busy <laughs> in life. Yeah. Lynn, I wonder if you would be willing to share a little bit of your experience along those lines. Uh, well, we have a connection here, as you may have noticed with the name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, well, don't let me get started, Grace. Um, <laughs> but just briefly, uh, I have, there's a little parallel there because I grew up in the Midwest in uh, uh, middle class white communities, farming communities, small towns, uh, graduate, uh, majored in music education. But my first teaching job was on Winnebago Indian Reservation in Nebraska. And I was closely involved in community, which uh, involved me with learning about Winnebago music, which is what I did my master's uh, thesis on then with recordings and so on, and ended up continuing uh, at Indiana U with, with world music and ethnomusicology was my concentration at Indiana. And so I, I identify with a lot of things you said in terms of the kinds of music, the world's so full, you know, yeah. of all kinds of music. Yeah. And, and then the cultural aspects, the function of the music in the community and in the culture, you know, that's been what I've been <laughs> involved in myself all these time. My, my uh, handicap is I'm not a performer like you are. I'm, ah. I, I love music. Uh, I didn't have the keyboard skills to go with certain kinds of music, uh, but I have been involved in not just studying, but in bringing those kinds of music. Uh, for example, we lived in Gallup, New Mexico for 11 years, and uh, a colleague and I decided to try to, we knew there were a lot of kinds of cultures, even in this small area, and a lot of kinds of music. But each group was kind of doing it for themselves and they weren't doing it for the other people, the other group. So we put together a multicultural uh, music festival one time and we identified 30 different kinds of music, different kinds of cultural backgrounds from Navajo and Zuni to Chinese to Hawaiian uh, to bluegrass and classical and the whole range uh, and just brought those so everybody <laughs> would be exposed to things we knew were there, but they didn't, they didn't get highlighted for the whole community. And so that kind of thing has been, you know, I've just been, had the opportunity to be involved in those kinds of things. The bagpipe player, policeman, that's a bagpipe mm -hmm. player. Nobody knew it, but we got him on stage, you know. Oh, those that's things, great. Those that's things are fun. Cool. I love that. I love yeah, those that. Are, I those are fun things. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations. That's, that sounds so cool. That's good. And I did notice um, we had some other questions here. Plus, I wanted to ask you about the um, how the Latin came into your life and how you got that with, but not yet. I want Sydney. Um, you've had your hand up for a minute there. Well, I'm singing in one of the choruses that Jennifer and Martha run, and I'm remark remark regularly at the quality of the arrangements that we sing, which are done by our speaker this evening and very well done they're they're not they're not cheap arrangements they're they're musically rich arrangements i also want to say that i had my first piano lesson in 60 years last summer and i chose jennifer to be my teacher i had been working on some <laughs> stuff and just needed some feedback and she rose to the occasion <laughs> <laughs> that have been her usual situation so I'm, I'm very glad of that and the last thing I want to say is that I'm a settlement house kid I oh. went to the street settlement from the age of five to the age of 13 uh, and so I studied with Eileen Flissler there and so I'm 
I'm at CMC because it's familiar, it's right. It's a place where I can mix up the sources that come into my life that are about music. And that's a very rich experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jennifer. Oh, thank you, Sydney. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, the Settlement House has, is, movement has, obviously that's where Community Music Center comes from, um, along with many other organizations across the country. And the, <clears throat> the organization that was that brought together the community uh, centers in San Francisco actually had its offices at Community Music Center for a time. I should say yeah. one last word, which is that my son and my daughter both were students at CMC. Wonderful. During the time that I was laid off from the school district, I was damn pleased that there was a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, let's hear it for the sliding scale. Yay! <laughs> Sylvia, I see your hand. Would you like to ask a question or make a comment? Well, I definitely want to start by expressing appreciation, Jennifer, for all that you have done at CMC and the thoughtfulness that um, you bring to being a teacher and to being a performing artist, I think you really shared that today with how you approach this presentation, just kind of illuminating the objectives and then how they intertwine with your personal and community life. So thank you for that. That was really Jennifer. Um, I'm curious, we don't have very much time, but you know, you've, you've explored a lot of different musical styles and in different cultural traditions. Do you have thoughts, I mean, for people who might be considering, oh, I would be interested in exploring something, kind of how to approach and how to balance both kind of a diversity of knowledge with also rigor and, and uh, going deep? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a fair question. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's broad and then there's deep. How do you, what do you do about that? Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you broaden your horizons and also deepen at the same time? Yeah, that, that's tricky. Um, uh, for me, I, you know, I've explored lots of different things and then things come up that something becomes useful. You know, accordion was useful for me as a, as a young woman. And then it became useful again for me about, uh, about 10 or so years ago. With the with the community choirs, so I picked it up again. So uh, it partly it's just you know opportunity knocks for different for different things, but then apart from that, then there are certain things that uh, like the piano has been my lifelong companion. It's um, you know my my closest uh, friend. So uh, I will always come back to the piano, and I'm grateful to have something that I have such a deep, it's like having a childhood friend, you know? Mm -hmm. There's nothing like a childhood friend that you still keep in touch with, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I have an instrument that I have that kind of depth and history with that I can always keep coming back to. So I, I love having um, that depth of commitment as well as, of course, there's a world within the piano. <laughs> So that doesn't uh, that doesn't save me from ah which direction do I go in because there's so many different directions you can go in on the piano so mm -hmm. I'm always juggling those two urges the one to to just go in all these wonderful different directions and the other to just ah go deep so uh, it's a it's a it's a juggling act for sure. <laughs> I see our time is drawing to to near an end. Um, do I see any other hands up at this moment or Tiger? Yes, Sarah. Sarah, can you unmute yourself? Um, I just love everything you do. I love your music and I love you for thinking the way you do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming tonight and supporting me. And and uh, I, I, it's it's an honor to be to, to be connected with you all in in different ways. I can see I have students here and family here and choir members here, and uh, I'm so grateful for for the whole community. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for for um, for being at the music center 
and for Absolutely. sharing your your experience with us. It's a uh, it's wonderful working with you, and we're lucky to have you. And we can all unmute and clap now. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to remind you that we have nine more presentations. There will be uh, five more during the spring and then uh, four. And, uh, I'm not sure who else is talking. I think that might be on Sydney's. Oh, it's probably 20 years old. Somebody okay. didn't have their. Oh, it, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the, the variety of presentations is, I think, really exciting. You've meant, uh, Chantel mentioned that Larry Dunn is coming up next in two weeks. Traeger will be making a presentation uh, on his is called Classical Foundations, Popular and Traditional Performances, Performance and Pedagogy. <clears throat> we have music of the Pacific Mamba Orchestra. We have black and brown artists who made the national anthem their own. We have beginning improvisation. We have vocal traditions and choral innovations, which will be a very interesting program, focusing on a piece that does many things in one piece. Um, we have teaching and supporting the neurodiverse piano student, traditions of the Russian piano school and their implementation in today's American teaching. And then Marta Rodriguez Salazar will close the series with bridging cultures and creating communities how my binational experience shaped my musical perspectives. So do watch for the announcements, come back and join us again. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun and I think we're gonna learn a lot. And thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you everybody for coming. And Sylvia. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.